Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I am bringing you a plugin called TPDF Dither, because that's what it is. Here's how TPDF Dither works. I'm going to whip out the old Sharpie and start drawing up uh, diagrams and things for you again. With luck, if things go well for me, I can end up having a um, better camera and be able to do this more effectively, have like better production values. But for the time being, I can afford paper and a pen, so I'll be doing that. Here is places that a audio value can end up in a digital number. These are each one bit separated from each other. The idea is that when you record something into like your 32-bit floating point or 16-bit CD audio or whatever, I mean, even in 32-bit floating point, I've explained this before, what you wind up having is um, the same position values. And then as you get quieter, it starts breaking down into finer ones, but you can't mix these around. You can't go from here and go like, okay, and up a little tiny way. It always has to sit in a place that's defined by these fixed points. That's why they call fixed point, um, actually, that's not why they call fixed point uh, audio, fixed point audio. What fixed point audio means is that it's always the same scale here rather than switching back and forth between tinier or larger ones. But you can also consider fixed point values to mean that when you're doing a digital recording and you've got a voltage level, you've got a waveform that changes and varies, once you've recorded it, it's always got to come down to one of these positions. Now, what happens when your signal value goes like that? Well, firstly, you're going to record it at given times, called sampling. And then once you've got those given times, you look at that and go, hey, here's where those set, but they have to be here. Now, this guy was very lucky. It ended up being exactly on the point. Another thing that means is that with this bit shift gain here, if it ended up on the point and you shifted 6 dB up or down, it's always going to be on a point, so it's not going to lose any data. But what about these guys? We don't know what's going on with those at all. Here's where dither enters in. If you just take these and go, okay, well, this one goes up here, and this one goes down there, and this one, well, gosh, I guess it's closer to this, so it'll go here. That's called truncation. What that means is that if you're doing a waveform that's kind of smooth, it's going to follow it in this kind of way and add these very regular features. It's like going to be sticking on the top of this waveform for all of this time. And then jump down and do that. And that's a very regular way of putting distortion into the sound. You know, it's, it's really obnoxious how this sounds like. What Dither does is it adds fuzz, which is kind of like this. Rather than have the smooth value, we've got this little sort of flickery effect. And what happens is you wind up being I'm trying to draw a representation of this on the fly. You wind up getting a fuzz that's made out of just these final results. Although it can't do a smooth line, what it can do is it can 
do a, a smooth sort of fuzz and noise between the two values. The way we do this is here's our values again. Suppose we've got a point here. If we add a a fuzz level that's exactly one bit in size, we have a thing called flat dither. And what flat dither does is it includes a degree of dithering. It includes some of this fuzz so that you can average out how it works. But there is also a way of averaging it out so that not only do you have the smooth fuzz bridging the gap between these two positions, but you also have the smooth fuzz keeping the waveform from shifting and changing and producing what we're calling artifacts as it moves through those. Like the, ideally, not only do you want an average behavior between the two positions, but you also want the noise level not to change as it goes. It's supposed to be consistent. It's supposed to be not altering. And what we do with that is we add another bit of noise on top of there. This produces what's called a triangular probability density function. And that's what TPDF is, triangular probability density function. And it is the correct dither as far as mathematically averaging stuff out so that there is no correlation between the waveform and the noise floor. Now, there are a lot of other ways to do word length reduction, and I've done most of them, but not most of them. I've done a bunch of I've done a bunch of others for myself, but TPDF is the theoretically correct option. It's 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 the never mind audio qualities, never mind trying to get noise out of the 3K hearing register so you can hear through it more clearly. Don't even worry about hearing through the noise. All we care about is that the noise is continuous, doesn't fluctuate, and is smooth and sounds like noise. Now, there's an interesting quality of TPDF. I have done this. Um, if you take loud high-resolution noise and quantize it down to, say, oh, I don't know, 2-bit, 4-bit, something like that. In theory, you shouldn't be able to hear the difference even if you quantized it down to 1-bit because it's noise. It's noise. We're not supposed to be able to tell the difference between that and signal. The, the quantization and stuff is theoretically supposed to just produce other noise. However, you can easily tell the difference. If you quantize high-resolution high noise, it just takes on this sort of harsh quality and you can pick it out 10 out of 10. But if you take the super high resolution noise, like full scale, just blast a noise and add TPDF dithering to it, which means you're adding one bit worth of noise and then another bit worth of noise so that it ends up with the, what we're calling a triangular probability density function is that Our values that we can hit are going to be mostly around the center because two things average together by combining them. We're going to average more in the center, but then sometimes they're going to add up to be maxed out in either direction. And the probability of stuff happening is going to be mostly around here, but then occasionally get up to here. And that's the density function that you need. Then when you add that to your full blast and noise, and truncated to anything, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's impossible to tell the difference between that and the super high res noise anymore. That's right. You have to dither noise to make it work without losing quality in digital audio. I'm not making this up. And this is also why the idea of self dithering is nonsense. There's no such thing as self dithering. Noise of a preamplifier or noise of your converter is part of the signal. Your job is to record it correctly, and that's probably going to mean doing it in 24-bit, you know, or higher if you can. 
And then when you go down to something like 24 or 16 or whatever bit, you dither that. Doesn't matter if it's noise. Doesn't matter if the background noise of the amplifier or whatever is louder than the theoretical minimum. Does not matter. You still have to dither it. So let's hear TPDF dither before I go on more trying to explain how this works. And uh, you can hear how that goes. Here is Alien Kittens. Now TPDF dither is engaged. But we really can't tell because this is a 24-bit dither. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go 16 bits down. And that means that our audio is now at a 8-bit threshold. There's only 256 values that it can be on. And you might think that's not enough to hear TP to F dither, but I'll shut it off for a second. If we bit shift gain it right back up again, here's what TP to F dither sounds like. Now I can also drag out another plugin just to show you how this works. Because I do have the And there you go, you see TPDF dither, the noise is continuing to happen. However, I can show you what the truncation sounds like on the same audio content. We're still doing the down 16 bits to where we've only got 256 positions for the audio to be in, and then back up again so we can hear it plainly. Here's what happens when you truncate. And in fact, using Ditherbox, which I'm only I'm only using it to demonstrate what the truncation is because I don't th there seems to be no point to making a truncation dither plugin at 24 bit that's rather pointless. But here, let's goose this up to and then again TPDF. Let's try the. Oh wait, hang on. Guess what, guys? I made a mistake. Look at where this is. Dither box is sitting after the final bit shift gain. That's what it did wrong. So watch this. But now they're correctly organized. And now you can hear that the TPDF is going to be the same as the previous one. Here's the new plugin. Here's the other box. But this is what you'd have if you did truncation. It's this sort of grungy quality. It's not much fun. In fact, I've even got a, a section where it gets quiet here. Compare this to the dither. And then to demonstrate it even more aggressively, let's throw some 16-bit truncation on here so that rather than having and we've we've gone down to 8-bit. And then 16 from 24. I think this is going down to 1 bit. Well we'll find out, won't we? That's one bit. We don't like this. I mean, we don't like being blasted with noise, but we don't like this e even worse. But if we change this over to, say, TPDF, that noise is really loud, but we can kind of sort of hear the music through it. I mean, when they, when they say you can hear the music through the dither, this is what they mean. We'll put it on a little bit back here. And again, let's scooch it back. Here's truncation.
That's going to be your noise floor for if you don't do these things properly. It's horrible. Although... Yeah, here, this is interesting. I can scooch the bit shift gain on the input around, so I'm kind of bringing it up in and out of that uh, horrible, horrific noise floor. And here's what we get. We're sinking down to the one bit point. And this is what your noise floor sounds like. It's this disgusting, grungy mess. Now, if we switch this over to flat dither, we can see that we've got something going on here. But hear how the volume level is fluctuating? And let's go to this part where it gets quieter. Yeah, that's clear. You can hear the noise sputtering in there because this is flat dither. It's only one noise source. Then if we go to TPDF dither, this is the TPDF dither that are chipping. Actually, this is the 24-bit TPDF dither. So let's put the dither box back just so that we can demonstrate what happens. And... And remember, this is truncation. But if we go to TPDF, what we got is... Smooth the silk, doesn't fluctuate, doesn't change. It's not sputtering at all. And let's sit and listen to the quieter, quieting down section for a second. While I've cut it right down to one bit resolution. When you listen to the, the truncation, it becomes just a roaring splat of nonsense. When you listen to TPDF dither, it's a featureless wash of noise, but listen closely and you can hear the signal way beneath the noise very plainly. I'm going to goose it up a little bit. And let's listen. Down to one bit. hear that? Hearing a little bass coming through there. Now bear in mind that I'm also releasing fancy plugins like Crazy Vinyl Dither, Spatialized. Naturalize. Naturalize is kind of special. But... The TPDF dither is the correct one. And this is TPDF dither at 16-bit resolution, I mean, 16-bit bit shift. It 
it's a TPDF dither that's designed to run at 24 bit. These bit shift gain things are here to sort of adjust around that. Sorry. I'm really going to have to do some post-processing to fix those things. Let me make a little note. Blasts. I have to fix these in post so they don't hurt, like, hurt you like they hurt me. But here is how we use TPDF dither. No controls. You just place it on the end of your mix bus. And it's feeding the, uh, it's feeding your converters, it's feeding any uh, files that you're recording to. And it just sits there. There's probably no reason to turn it off. Um, if you wanted to make it do 16-bit, you would do it with those bit shift gain plugins like I demonstrated. But uh, yeah, this is this is how this works. You should never have to open it. If you did, you'll see absolutely nothing in it because it's a faceless plugin. On the end of your mix bus, this goes here. And then in logic, if you are say bouncing a project or a section. You say dithering, none. And you know, an interesting feature about this is, there's several actually. If you're doing MP3, it's probably going to write out the PCM file first and then make the MP3 from that. At least I think that's how logic works. It's how it's done at the last few times I've done this. But also notice this. Dithering is giving you four options, one of which ain't here. I'm not sure why UV22 ain't here, but it's not. Pow R1, Pow R2, Pow R3. Unless I miss my guess, none of those are TPDF. So logic is not giving you the option to do the single most fundamental kind of dither that you could have. Instead, it's giving you other things and I'll get into some of these things like what a noise shaper is later. Like Power One is already a kind of noise shaping. It's already a kind of colored dither, and you might want the regular plain ordinary dither. Power Two is noise shaping on top of dithering, and Power Three is rather extreme. It's a pretty intense form of noise shaping that throws a bunch of high frequency energy around. You don't necessarily want to do that. It doesn't always work out great for the final output audio. Plus, you're not monitoring through it. What good is a dithering algorithm that sits only on the output, but it only comes into effect when you're bouncing, rather than what you're monitoring through? That's just no good. So, at least in logic, I'm not sure what other DAWs are doing. At least in logic, leave it set to none. Uh, we'll provide you with all kinds of wonderful dithers, but if you don't like fancy dithers or changing stuff around, TPDF dither is the industry standard, like scientifically accurate, ultimate, can't go wrong with type of dither. And as you heard when I demonstrated it, you set that up and shift the uh, volume level of your audio in and out of it, and it fades right down very nicely to beneath the noise floor. And you can still plainly hear what's going on way, way under the noise floor, and it behaves perfectly well. That's TPDF dither. That's why this is coming out first, is it's the baseline. It's pretty much what you're going to use if you are I'm trying to think of what to say because the fact is TPDF is all that I'm talking about and I have a bunch of other dithers that I think are way better. But I can talk about those later. For now, if you don't like strange, crazy, unusual things, TPDF dither is the one that you want. And it is free for audio unit and Mac and PC 
VST. I hope you enjoy it.